Hi, welcome to episode 190 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog about this episode and every episode show notes over at thecornerofknitandtea.com. We have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, and that's where I sell my hand spun yarns. And finally, we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. And we are, uh, we just kicked off um, our current spin along, which is the Tour de France. That started yesterday. So let's get into it. Hi, how are you? It is Sunday, June, July. I don't know where I am. It is Sunday, July 8th. And um, it is beautiful here. It's actually been a little bit cooler in the last couple days, 80 degrees or so. Um, I did get attacked by mosquitoes yesterday, which was a little less than fun, but we went to a barbecue for friends, which was fun, except for the mosquitoes. And um, I even took some knitting with me and got a little bit of knitting done. Otherwise, it's only been a few days since I've seen you, so this episode will be a little bit light. Um, but it actually has a lot of knitting content because um, my current spin is on the wheel and I did not pull it off, although I brought the fiber. Um, so let's jump right in. I am drinking Plum Deluxe Hammock Blend Black Tea. This was um, one of the monthly club offerings several months ago, uh, probably close to a year ago. Um, it's like orange cream iced tea, um, black tea, orange peels, natural cream, cream flavor. And it was one of my favorites from when I was in the club. Um, they do a Tea of the Month club, so if you're interested, you can check them out. It is plumdeluxe.com. Um, and today I'm drinking it in my Hershey's chocolate mug, even though it is orange. And what I remember of this tea is that it kind of tastes like an orange creamsicle, or we used to call them 50-50 bars, the orange with the vanilla inside. Um, and it's a black tea, but it is really, really delicious. And it makes me think of summer because of the ice cream bars. So that's quite warm, but it is delicious. Um, I brewed something warm because I've been in the house all day and we have had the air conditioning going, so I've been a little chilly. Um, the first thing to show you, even though technically it was done earlier this week, technically it was done at the end of last week, is my Hitofu Day. And that is a pattern, and I still forgot to look it up. It is a beautiful lace cardigan pattern. I'll try and get in right here. Um, it has a really beautiful kind of um, accordion fronts where you keep adding dimensions. It is basically roughly the same on the back. And it starts with a little bit of a shrug and then goes into a drapey lacy sweater, um, which I am hoping to enjoy wearing in my office because my office is a little chilly. Today I just have it on with a tank top underneath um, and I am enjoying it. So I did take a few pictures for my Ravelry page. I knit it out of Wolmai's lace garn. That is, um, Wolmai's is uh, Claudia in Germany. And the lace garn skeins are about 1,700 yards, a little bit more than that. I used just under 1,100 yards. I knit it per pattern on the recommended needle size. And the only thing I did was I made mine just a smidge longer. It's supposed to be a little bit more cropped. And I added one extra pattern repeat, um, so an extra 16 rows for length. And all of those notes are on my project page. And it was a fun knit, and I am enjoying wearing it. So, um... I can highly recommend it. The next thing that I finished, and actually this I did finish this week, is I was knitting some um, fingerless mitts, and I showed you these. I um, knit these out of the Mono Steel Uruguay Fino, which is a um, merino and silk um, single. It uh, reminds me a little bit of Mad Tosh Light, although it is a little bit thinner than that. Um, and I was using one of their gradient sets, uh, in the, I think it was the Augusta colorway, and it goes through um, a really pretty light silver, and then into kind of a robin's egg blue, and then into a gray that has some streaks of the blue in it, and then a teal, and then a charcoal gray. Um, I used a pattern called Color Block Mitts. It is a free pearl Soho pattern, and there are details on my project page. Um, it actually called for four colors, and I had five, so I rearranged a little bit, and what I did was I knit till a certain amount of inches, and then I alternated four rows. So if this is color A, then I knit four rows of A, B, A, B, or I guess B, A, B, A, and then um, I went ahead and moved on. 
So that is, um, those are my color work mitts and they are done. I'm going to have Wes help me take some photos tonight and then um, I'm going to write a little tutorial on how I did these and this will actually be for um, another blog. So it will be forthcoming, but these are lovely. I'm probably going to send them back to the company um, as a sample that I knit, but um, I had a good time knitting these and I would definitely make them again. I will say um, Fino comes 490 yards to 100 grams in the Fino mini set. That means that there are 20 gram each skeins of each of the colors. And I used approximately 40 grams, um, so I still have 60 grams left. So you could easily make um, a color block cowl or um, like a faded cowl or a faded hat to go with these. Um, so you could definitely get your mileage out of this one. So that is done and will be put on the um, almost finished list this week. Like I said, I just need to get some photos and maybe block these a bit and then send them off. So let's talk about what I've been knitting this week. Yesterday we went to a barbecue, like I said, and I wanted to um, start something that I could take with me that would be easy to work on in a party. And I showed you this skein a while ago. Um, it is a Christmas skein from Leading Men Fiber Arts. And it is O Christmas Tree on their Show Stealer base, which is 435 yards, 100 grams, 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. The colorway looks thusly like a Christmas tree with Christmas lights. It is green and then it's got speckles of dark green, blue, yellow, and red. The pattern that I chose to knit is Galliano by Tracy Millar. That is, um, Tracy is one half of the Grocery Girls and it is her first sock pattern. Um, and I liked it. It's got a little bit of um, lace and cables on it and uh, some twisted rib and I thought it would be really nice. And so this is what I've got so far. If you saw my Instagram yesterday, I actually had one more repeat on there. Um, that's because <laughs> I actually ripped it out and started over. So technically I knit this whole part twice yesterday. Um, I, uh, the socks call for um, US one and a half, but I am more comfortable with US ones. So I went down a needle size and then I hesitated as to whether to knit um, the small or the medium size. And there's an eight stitch difference between the small and the medium size. And I knew the medium would be too big, but I was afraid the small would be too small. And I ended up kind of compromising in the middle. So what I did is I'm knitting the medium size for the front cable and lace panel. Um, which will be like the front of the sock and the top of the foot. And then I am knitting the small size on the back of the sock, which means the back of the sock and the heel and kind of through the back of the foot will fit a little bit more snugly. And then I will have more room in the cuff and on the top of the foot. So um, it just means that some of the edging will kind of be pulled around on the sock, but that's okay with me. Um, I just didn't like the way it was coming out at 56 stitches. So that is what I'm working on. I hope to get a few more repeats and maybe down through the heel this week. Um, I will probably work on this project in the evening when I am reading um, because basically the way the pattern works, um, it's pretty easily memorizable and you only have to do something every four rows. Otherwise, you're pretty much just knitting the knits and purling the purls. Um, so I might try this while I read in the evenings. Um, and if so, then this will see some work this week. Um, mostly I will be spinning, but like I said, I like to read for half an hour, 45 minutes before bed. And if I can work out knitting with it, then that will happen. So these are my Christmas in July socks. If any of you want to join me, I just tagged it Christmas in July and um, I think sock talk as well and uh, for the grocery girls and that's what I'm working on. So that is the first project. The second project is I'm getting ready to cast on for a sweater for myself. It is a nice kind of beachy lacy pullover and I ordered some yarn from Webs and I think I showed you that it is Katia Air Lux and it is in the teal colorway and it's kind of a teal metallic. I don't even know if you can tell from the screen, but it kind of shows up as a, this is not blocked yet. I just finished knitting this today. Um, this is a swatch. Um, the, the sweater is a uh, stockinette punctuated by bits of um, this lace pattern here. So I just decided to make my swatch look a little bit like the sweater. I need to wash and lay it flat to dry. I think I am getting close to gauge, although not quite. Um, 
However, I really like the fabric on these size needles, so I think I'm just going to do the math and knit an alternate size. Um, you know, probably just go down one size smaller since my gauge is not quite right. Um, but I will do the math and hopefully cast on for that this week too. This will be the project that I work on outside the house um, that I take with me to knit night and lunch times and those kinds of things. So that is the next project that will be cast on the needles. It's not really on the needles yet, but I did um, swatch for it today. So that is what's going on there. Finally, and like I said, I know this is going to be a short episode, the tour started. So I have gone through this um, in quite a few of my recent podcasts, particularly the most recent one. Um, the Tour de Fleece is a, an event for spinners on Ravelry that coincides with the Tour de France. And the Tour de France started yesterday, July 7th. It started off with a bang, or should I say the first stage ended with a bang. Um, if you are watching, you'll know what I mean. If you're not watching, you should consider. Um, so I watched the first stage late last night and finished it this morning, and then the second stage we'll watch this evening, and while I am watching the tour, I am spinning along. The first spin on my wheel is this beautiful fiber. It is Blue Moon Fiber Arts. It is a 50% yak, 50% silk um, blend, so it is super luxurious, and it is called Metal Ocalypse. Um, and it is um, shiny and um, lustrous, that's the silk, and it's red, yellow, green, and blue um, primarily, and like it's got some teal and then some darker blue, um, and the fiber itself just glows. I have spun maybe a quarter of it. This is eight ounces. Um, and so I started spinning last night. I am finding this a little challenging as I thought I would. Um, Yak is a super soft, super short stapled fiber. And so they have blended it, um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts blended it with silk, which is a lot um, longer and um, uh, a longer stapled fiber. Um, and so the result is that I find it a little bit challenging to spin. I feel like it wants to break apart a little bit, at least the parts that are heavy on the yak, the parts that are heavy on the silk are fine. Um, so I do have to keep up with um, drafting nice and evenly or else I end up um, breaking the single, which I have done quite a few times, which is not as much fun for me. Um, this is spinning fairly thin and I think I'm gonna do a two ply um, and I might try and line up the colors. I mean, that's sort of the way I'm spinning it. Uh, basically, when I uh, unbraided this braid, it was dyed, um, I can't remember whether it was dyed with four in a row or just two. It was basically looped on itself a couple times and then it was dyed so that the dye colors match up. And I decided on this one, I didn't want a maximum barber pull it. I thought it might be nice to keep some stripey color runs in there. Um, so I'm basically spinning it straight through um, rather than stripping the fiber thinner, um, which I think is going to be fine. Um, and then when I ply it, I'll end up with some sections where you'll see a single color because the colors will match, and then some sections where they won't, where it will be a little bit more colorful. I think that will be kind of a really interesting spin. I expect that I'll get pretty good yardage on this because it's eight ounces, um, and since it is so lustrous and shiny and it's spinning thin, I'm hopeful that it will make um, a nice shawl yarn. So, and this will probably go up in the shop when I'm done with it. So that is my spin for the next couple days. I should um, definitely be done by the time I talk to you next week um, because I'll be spinning every night for a couple hours. Um, so I should probably be plying this mid to late week. And then I'll move on to the box from Kramer, the Mash Chunky Roving, and that is all those little bits of colors. I'm probably going to spin them um, one after the other through to the end, and then um, since it's about eight ounces, I should be able to fit all of that on my bobbin. And then when I am winding off the bobbin to do center pole balls, I will then separate it into the little skeins um, so that I will keep just each color together. They will be I'll end up with 20 um, semi-solid skeins, and then I can decide what, if anything, I want to knit from them. I'm thinking maybe a colorwork hat or colorwork mitts, um, because there won't be a, there is um, eight ounces of fiber there, so there should be plenty. Um, maybe I'll do a colorwork cowl. Um, there should be plenty of fiber there, but there won't be a lot of each colorway since it's 20 colors. 
So um, my thinking is that I'll need to do something with lots of little short sections. So I'll have to look and see if there are some super colorful um, patterned cowls or I could just kind of make up my own the way I did with that leftovers cowl. Um, but I'll have to see what I want to do with it when I get all of those done. Um, I expect I'll get some of those done this week and um, or at least I'll probably be mid singles next time, but I'll bring it in to show you. So um, one final note, I popped a whole bunch of spins up in the shop this week. Um, they were spins that I had either done recently and just finished or things that I had pulled out of um, my personal stash where I just hadn't gotten to use it yet. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, they were braids that I held back because they were favorites, which is why they didn't go into the shop the first time. And then I just decided that I sort of had to get real. And so I put some of those lovely braids in the shop. So if you want to check those out, those are available for sale. So that is what's going on here. Um, if you are spinning in Tour de Fleece and would like to come find a team, we are open to anyone. We have very few rules, we have prizes, and we enjoy spinning during the tour. We also have someone who is only watching the tour and giving us comments in the thread, a friend of mine, Linda. Um, so you are welcome to come join us. We would love to have you. Um, there's lots of activity so far in the thread, which has been really nice to see. So I guess I will say goodbye to you for now. I hope you are enjoying your tour if you're spinning. If not, I hope you're enjoying your summer and knitting. And I will talk to you again soon. So until I see you the next time, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time.